Hey, yeah, I know I'm downed out in my soccer gear, but we still have a very important blog to review today. It's an album that we've been really kind of mysticizing about for years, never actually knowing whether it was going to happen or not. But it's happening, because here it is. This is Blur's first new album in 13 years. Love the little Dharma initiative symbol there on the back, Lost Fans. Anyway, this is the magic weapon. We've waited a long time for it. In fact, I didn't think we were actually going to get it. How we talk. They made it when they had a week off in China last year on a tour that so one of the stops got canceled. They recorded the album, but then he said that it was something they would have to work with to make it to an actual album. I love that. Winky face. And they didn't actually know if they were ever going to release it. So, that was scary, because we never thought we'd get it. But we did, surprise! In any case, we actually have this album, and I want to talk to you about the fact is, I don't know how he does it. I'm talking about the lead singer. Damon Albarn is a man of many talents, but he's also a man of many projects. I mean, he's got art projects in the works, he's got books in the works, he's got kids, he's also got this album coming out. He's got a future Gorillaz album, supposedly on the rise for this year. Probably another opera he was talking about. Maybe another solo album, maybe another tour, Africa tour, maybe another musical project filmed on the moon. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the man does it. He just seems to keep going with stress level of infinity and not explode. I don't I don't know how he does it. So keep that in mind when you're listening to this because god damn Damon Almarn seems to get it all done. He really does. So let's go into some history of Blur. Blur are an English rock band formed in London in nineteen eighty eight. They consist of keyboard player and singer Damon Albarn, guitarist Graham Coxon, bassist Alex James, and drummer Dave Roundtree. They actually put out their first album, Leisure, in 1991, incorporating the sounds of Manchester shoegazing, followed by a stylistic change when they influenced English guitar pop groups such as the Kinks, the Beatles, influenced by, of course. When they released Modern Life is Rubbish in 93, Park Life in 94, The Great Escape in 95, and as a result, the band helped popularize Britpop genre entirely, received huge mass popularity in the UK, aided the chart battle with, of course, their Britpop rivals, Oasis, the Battle of Britpop. Uh, in recording the follow-up Blur in 1997, the band underwent another reinvention, showing influence from the lo-fi style of American indie groups. The album included their single Song 2, brought Blur to the mainstream in the United States. The next album, of course, 13 in 1999, saw Blur members expanding and experimenting with electronic and gospel music, and featured more personal lyrics from Auburn. In, 22, in 2002, Blur had a problem with Coxon, who left the group in the recording of the seventh album, Think Tank, in 2003, containing electronic music and more minimal guitar work. The album was marked by Auburn's growing interest in hip-hop and African music, and after a tour of 2003 without Coxon, Blur did no studio work as a band and the members engaged in other projects. Of course, this happens... Years ago, they were reunited in 2009, doing some tour dates, but they didn't ever actually record an album. That went for a while, and then 2012, they came back for another round of reunion tour dates, and again, they recorded an album, and a week off they had in China. Graham Coxum stepped up, trying to make up for his exit of the group, took that recording process, made it into tracks, and Damon said this was awesome stuff and wanted to make immediate work on it and put some lyrics down on it, and that's how we have the Magic Whip. Pretty amazing, really. This group's been super holed up over everything they needed to do. So let's go into it. This is, of course, the Magic Whip. My little write-up for it. In any case, the Magic Whip is an incredible album for a lot of reasons, but it's also incredible just because it exists in the first place. It's... I don't care. They're not... They come back with this. They're not blasting for attention like Soundgarden with the uh, immediate sounds of... I've Been Away Too Long, or Black Sabbath with 13, more like they just put out an album that feels like they were never gone in the first place. It was conceived when they were off in Japan or China, I think. I think it was Japan. But Auburn said that its session work was rough, and he doubted we would hear it, so the fact that it's here is a miracle. And it was made into tracks, and then immediately recorded into vocals secretly, without anyone talking about it. That doesn't happen in the music world anymore. So, let's get into it. The first track on the album is Lonesome Street. Instead of a huge single opener, like I said, they go for more of a cohesive unit opener, band just doing what they always did. 
acoustic guitar strumming, rich harmonies, and quirky Britishness. <laughs> it's a solid start to an album. It seems to be frozen in, two, in time. Like, Blur in 2003 just jumped into a hyperbolic chamber and woke up. I don't know. Even though they're unaffected by 13 years since they had recorded music together. New World Towers is a slower, more purposely mellowed out opening with, Dalmar, with Damon doing his anti-21st century lyrics to make it feel like alien and isolated. The song is a bit like Damon's solo work. Go Out starts with, it's the lead single actually right now. starts with Damon singing in a very droning way. It's very driven by guitar work. It's fuzz guitar work from Graham and the lines are amelodic. Blur have always been really great at doing that kind of thing where they end up in amelodic melody that people still actually want to listen to. It's driving. The end of a song consists with a blistering guitar solo. It's the lead single for now. I would suggest that will probably change, but we'll see. Anyway, the next one is Ice Cream Man. Hands down the weirdest song on the album. It's another amelodic vocal line song that's driven by electronic beeps and synths. It's critically been the most polarizing song. I don't know, I personally didn't mind it that much. I think it works and it fits right in, but a lot of people hated that song, so it was just too weird. Eh, it was Blur, what do you expect? Thought I Was a Spaceman is the next one. It's a synth-driven robot song, very emotionally disconnected. I haven't heard Blur or any anything like this before. Uh, it might fit in on a solo album from Damon. The song comes apart later and dissolves in this weird, jazzy, empty, hole-in-space kind of sounding thing. It's kind of crazy, but I like it a lot. I broadcast starts with a very dystopian jazz start, and it's led in by synths before Graham's guitar lines come in and give us that jolt of Britpop energy that they're known for. This song could fit on anywhere on a Blur album. It just could. It just works so well they could put it anywhere. After that, they get to probably my personal favorite on the album, which is my Terracotta Heart. It's their most personal song to date. This song is about the actual relationship between Damon Albarn and Graham Coxum as it sits today. It's a beautiful song that you can tell means a lot to the band. It's great. I hope it becomes the next single. There Are Too Many of Us is a very Britpop song, maybe the best example of straightforward Britpop on here. It's the easiest song to take in. It's less dystopian and space sounding. <laughs> it's driven by the monotonous singing, the snare drums, and impulsive guitar lines. It's a very Blur song. No one else could have written this music, aside from maybe Radiohead or Oasis. I think it's an album highlight. Ghost Ship is the next one on there. It's a more happy Blur, blur song. Again, happy not in the traditional sense, but happy for Blur sounds disjointed and erythial, but happy nonetheless. The guitars are very islandy, the vocals are melodic and distant. This is an album highlight to me because it defies genre, and I think that's a powerful statement about the song. Pyongyang is a sonically driven dystopian song like Floating in Space. The bass lines of this song drive it while Damon sings softly about despair slowly catching up with him. It's a beautiful song, it's distant and quiet. Ong Ong serves as the happy sing-along for the desolate, distant planet that is the Magic Whip. It fits well with their weird style, but it's much more of a bar pub sing-along than anything else. It's much more straightforward Brit sing-along, and I still think it works, but it definitely is a lot different. Probably will end up being the next lead single. Just seems to be made for the radio. The final song on here is Mirrorball which is a space-sounding alt-rock song from the distance. It's emotionally distant. This is driven by guitar lines from Graham, of course, and they have a very Asian string sound about them. It, I don't know. It feels very sad and spacey. Again, it's dystopian. This whole album feels dystopian and distant future, kind of sci-fi-esque. I don't know. This world is happy to have this album, that it even exists at all to me. I, I'm happy about that. I never thought we would see it, uh, that 40-hour recording session was able to give birth to this weirdly comfortable, comfortable album. I can't believe they were able to accomplish that much with that. It tells you how much Blur can do with 40 hours. They come out of this seeming like they sound exactly like the Blur of old. It's amazing. Frozen in time. Damon's emotionally distant solo work sounds a little bit like it's influenced the album, but it's not a bad thing. Uh, as a whole, it's amazing how well this works. It's like a journey through open space. It's both awe-inspiring crushingly sad and also it's triumphant in the fact that you're looking at something that's truly amazing that's what it feels like when you listen to this it's distant and scary but it's also beautiful it's a very good album it's easily i don't know it seemed to be a look to the future a very bright look to the future i would say that this is a good sign for blur fans everywhere four stars recommending go out my terracotta heart go ship and ong ong thank you We'll be back with some more next week, but that's what I got for now.